Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I'm one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the non-normal capability analysis using Minitab 20, version 20. Um, the capability analysis is a tool used in uh, the Lean and Six Sigma methodology, as well as uh, other disciplines. Um, it's a very powerful tool to help us understand if we are, are meeting our customer requirements, all right, using data, data to help us through, through metric or metrics to understand, you know, how capable our process is of meeting the target uh, and the spec limits given by the customer. So uh, before we start, let, let me kind of uh, give you the scenario of the data that we're looking at. Um, the data that we're looking at follows the scenario of we are a uh, installation crew for a um, IT company. Okay, so let me let me actually read this off to you. Um, so our Lean Six Sigma project is to reduce the lead time to install an IT application at a customer site. It should take no more than 30 days working 10 hours per day, Monday through Friday, to complete, test, and certify the installation. If we follow our standard process, then the target lead time should be around 24 days. Uh, while 24 days is our target, the customer ex has expressed that their satisfaction increases as we perform the installation faster. We need to understand our baseline capability to meet the customer demand. Therefore, we can perform a capability analysis, all right? Uh, and, and you're looking at the data here. I've, I was actually looking off uh, on a screen that you can't see. So here is our data. Um, we are going to use the uh, uh, Minitabs non-normal capability analysis. Uh, really first, well, you know, I, I'm gonna back up and uh, number one, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we know it's non-normal. So let's do a normality test. Okay, so we'll uh, click on the normality test. We'll look at the variable lead time. Uh, we'll hit OK, and the normality test will populate, and the p value will show us that we have a non normal process. All right, <clears throat> not only do we have a non normal process, but it should be non normal. That's an that's, that's, uh, unfortunate mistake that a, a lot of practitioners. Uh, fall into is just because it says it's not normal, does that necessarily mean that the, the distribution of data should be not normal? In this case, we're, we're trying to uh, not exceed that 24 days, but the customer says, you know, we'll be happy if you get it done faster. So we're really constantly pushing towards zero days. So our distribution should look kind of like a ski slope, uh, and that's a non normal distribution. So now that we have proven that we have a non-normal distribution, we'll go up into stat, uh, we'll go to quality tools. And now we need to understand what kind of a non-normal distribution we have. So to do that, we're gonna go into individual distribution identification. So this is gonna help us to understand what kind of distribution we have, because there, there are several types of, of uh, distributions, several type of, types of non-normal distributions. So our single column is lead time, our subgroup size, uh, because every, every insulation time is unique. Um, uh, in this case, we're not sampling, so our subgroup size is going to be uh, going to equal one. And we're gonna look at all distributions and transformations. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go ahead and hit OK, and what that will give us is uh, a number of great graphs, all right, and, and what, what Minitab has done is, is looked at this distribution of data and said, okay, what is this distribution best fit, all right, what, what kind of distribution, you know, best fits this, excuse me, so 
what we're looking for here is we're looking for the, the highest p-value. Now, we are going to uh, ignore any kind of, kind of transformation in, in this case, all right? Because transforming data is taking the raw data and, and, and turning it into something, something else. Uh, and, and we don't necessarily like to do that. So we, we want to really work with the raw data without transforming. So we're going to, uh, we're not going to pay attention to the box Cox transformation, nor are we going to pay attention to the uh, Johnson transformation, uh, transformation, which is in, in here as well, uh, down at the bottom of the last graph. So we look through here and we say, you know, what, what's our highest P value? Uh, and our highest p value looks so far like it's it may be exponential. That's a 0 0.481, I believe. Uh, we have some other high ones, three parameter Weibull. All right, so our winner is uh, our winner is exponential. All right, with a uh, 0.481, I believe that's 0.481. It's kind of small. Yeah, 0.481. So now that we know our exponential is uh, best fits uh, the distribution, all right, now uh, we are going to go back up to stat. We are going to go into uh, capability analysis. Uh, into non-normal, and then we are going to pick an exponential. All right, now our lower spec, let me look off screen here and just make sure that I'm putting the correct uh, lower and upper spec in. Our lower spec is zero. Uh, and not only is that is that our lower spec, but we can't get any less than zero, meaning zero days. So zero also is our boundary, all right? If you don't click that boundary, mini tab will calculate less than zero, all right? And then in our case, you know, we haven't really figured out how to go back in time. So uh, zero is, is uh, uh, our lower spec and it also about our boundary, okay? And then we have 300 and this is really written in hours. Okay, our single column is lead time. All right, uh, and then if we go into options, options allows us to uh, put in our target. Okay, uh, it also allows us to uh, determine if, if we want to see our uh, uh, metrics in parts per million or percents. And in this case, you know, we don't do a million installations. Um, so in this case, we're going to look at percents. A lot, a lot of service processes, you know, that, that don't make millions of parts a day or a week or whatever, uh, can stick to that percents. Okay, we'll hit OK. Uh, we will hit, uh, we will click on OK again. All right, and that is going to give us our capability analysis. Um, capability analysis, you'll see that, that we don't have a lower, uh, we don't have PPL, which is PP lower, uh, because the, the, it's a boundary. We can't calculate that way. So it's only gonna show us the, the upper. So oh, we've got a PPK of 0.23. We, we've got a uh, percent total defects uh, that we're creating of almost 25%. So again, you can, you can actually uh, calculate a, uh, a return on investment or you know, how much this is, is really impacting your company by taking some dollar amount of a defect and then um, multiplying it times that 24.94. Times that so, that, that gives you kind of an estimated uh, hit to your company for this process only performing at a certain level. Uh, so I will go ahead and hit, o, hit okay. 
So I, I hope that you have um, learned a little bit more, a little bit about the capability analysis. Let me get back to uh, another screen here. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Clay, uh, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at uh, Six Sigma Development Solutions. Uh, again, I hope that, that you gained a little bit more knowledge about the non-normal capability analysis and the power in that analysis. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact me. Uh, my email address is kclay at sixsigmadsi.com. I will put that down in the uh, uh, description and information for this uh, YouTube video. And I hope everybody uh, has a wonderful day and thank you.